Awesome. So welcome to W email list with your brand archetypes. Super excited to have you guys here. Um, I was just kind of checking in with people to see where they are um, in their business and kind of where they are with their email lists. And the beauty of the training that you're going to get today is that you're going to get to walk away with some really specific things that you can use not only to double your email list or triple it or whoever you, you can grow it to, to as big as you want, but it's also really, really good um, invite people um, on your online community as well. So if you don't have an online community yet, that's okay. We're going to talk a little bit about how you could actually also do that because here's the thing, when we are building a business and it sounds like most of you are in the very beginning, you know, maybe shifting directions, not quite a big, you know, following it, totally fine. But there's really two main places that we want to be. Definitely we want to be online someplace, right? So we want to pick one main platform and, and the, uh, the workbook that you guys have has got a ton of information. So just know that we're not, there's absolutely no way I can take you through the entire workbook <laughs> in one hour, but I will absolutely, we're going to be hitting the, the first main points uh, for, for where you are today. But you want to be online and you want to have email. You really do want to have both because we are in a digital world and some people respond and learn differently too. Some people love video. Some people don't watch video. Some people love to, you know, read the written word. Some people don't. It really just depends. But the other thing is that most of your clients are going to be somewhere online at some point, whether it's TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn or Pinterest, they're going to be someplace. And the beauty of what I'm going to teach you today is that you don't have to be on all the places you get to pick one main platform. And that's really what I want to stress. If you take nothing else away from this today, on social media, you want one main platform. And that's it. That's it to start with. Once you're at six figures, even a half a million dollars in your business, then you can start adding in more things. But you really want to go all in and focus all of your time and energy in one main platform that your ideal client is on. For me, it's Facebook. I have built my business not only to six figures, but multiple six figures. I have a seven figure company now, and it has all been based on cultivating connection and community on Facebook and also with email too. So why do we want email if it works so great on digital, right? You know, why, why would we need both? It's because social media owns their platforms. We don't own our list, our community, our people on their platform, they do. So we wanna make sure that if anything was to ever happen, like the craziness that happened on Wednesday with internet outages everywhere and Zoom links not working and you know not being able to get online, you wanna be able to have a way that you can absolutely still connect and nurture your ideal client. So when you have an email list, not only can you connect with them with the written word, you can also you know, send snippets of your video or even communicate with them via video too. But we really do want those two main pieces. So until you're at six figures, multiple six figures, even half a million dollars in your business, those are your two priorities, okay? Start cultivating a community with your email list and then also online. And, and I'm gonna talk about you know, those, those two things. We're actually gonna, repurpose multiple ways that you can do this without having to be like, oh my God, I've got to create all of this over here for email and I have to create all of this over here for social media. No, you get to do it once and it gets to go in both places. So I am all about repurposing and keeping simple. Simple, you, you will hear me say simple so many times because as a solo entrepreneur, we've got so many different hats to wear that it just can make us feel overwhelmed. We can be confused. We can be spinning and we can be like, I'm tapping out and just going to burn it all down. So I don't know if you've ever been there before, but I've been there multiple times on my journey where I'm like, oh, this is just way too much. I'm out. It's got to be easier to just be a barista at Starbucks or something. <laughs> right. Uh, welcome, Jennifer. Really, really glad to hear to have you here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. It just happens to be 1111 here in Charleston. Amazing. Let me just put my glasses on real quick. Does anybody need the workbook, by the way, before we pop in? Yes, Laura, Jill. Okay, great. You guys, I saw that your, um, you looked a little bit like, oh, wait a minute, I don't have the workbook. Okay, so, so here's what I'm going to do. I am going to share with you, now this link that I'm sharing with you actually takes you to 
the quiz, but once you fill out your name and email, you're gonna, you should be able to get the workbook too. Um, did you guys already register for, for this? For, obviously you've got the Zoom link you registered. All right. Let me see if we also have a different, hang on just a minute. I wanna grab a direct link for you. Let me see if I can pull that up quickly. Because we sent it inside of an email. Here we go. Oh, that's the assessment. That is not your workbook. Okay, hang on, bear with me. Here we go. Awesome. All right, here's the direct link to your workbook. This should make it easy. Alrighty, there you go. There's the direct link. Jennifer, Pamela, do you have your workbook? And do you also have your top archetype? Because we're gonna we're gonna dive into the top archetype as well as the workbook. If you need either one of those, please let me know. Okay, I'm gonna start with the archetypes because this is the first place to start because this is all about what makes you special, what makes you unique, and what is really attractive to clients and what are they looking for in you? So let me hear, before I pull up the cards, I just wanna hear from, from all of you, which one was your top archetype? That way we won't go through all 12, we'll just go through the ones that are really the ones that you guys have. Jill, I had. I had a tie for the top two okay. um, and then my third one came in only one point below those two. So, okay. Okay. Um, but the top two tie were the alchemist and the explorer. Oh, okay. Beautiful. Those are really good. Uh, I mean, they're all really good. Let me just also preface this, that we are all, all of these. Okay. So if we're like, oh my God, I really like what they say about this one. And I really like that one. And so I don't even know what I am now. We, we have all of these components inside us. Okay. It's just that the top three are actually gonna give us a greater picture, but today we're only gonna talk about the top one because we're gonna use that top one to really attract your clients. If you want more information about learning how to use your top three, I'm actually gonna be doing a VIP day on, on uncovering the soul of your brand. It is, uh, it, typically I only teach this to the people inside of Activate Abundance as a bonus, but I'm gonna be doing a four hour workshop on that. I'll share the link there. That way you can check it out, take a look at it and see how you can actually take your top three archetypes so that you're walking away with incredible clarity about who you're serving, what they're attracted to, what you're a yes for, what, um, what you're a no for, you know, you know what, who, which clients are for you, which clients are not for you so that we can stop trying to convince or persuade people that are not our client to be our client and instead really go all in to the people that are looking for a solution. That we that we that we need to have, or that they need to have. I'm going to give you a little bit of a statistic, um, and that is, in your world right now, there are only three percent of the people that are in your world right now that are ready to buy right now, like, and they are warm. They are like hot, hot, hot. They have been in your world for a while. They've been nurtured by you, seen you. They've had an experience with you in some way, shape, or form. They're not. They're not cold. Cold leads are never ready to buy. Okay. There's 30% of the people in your world right now that um, are what we call sidewalkers. They're out there, they're listening, they might be commenting, they might be saying, well, your stuff is really great, but they're not actively ready to do anything. And it's because they don't really feel like they have a problem that needs to be solved. Okay. So just know that there's 30% of people out there that you might be attracting, but they're not really ready. They're not willing to invest. They're not willing to like act, take action to have their problems solved. Okay. Those are not the people that we market to. And yet we spend a lot of time and energy trying to convince those people that they have a problem. So we're going to dial it into what we call the people that are in the slow lane. Okay. The slow lane people are on their way, they're actively looking for a solution and they're actively looking for a solution that you can provide, okay? They are looking, which means that they are ready. They want, it is enough of a challenge for them to experience whatever pain they're in that they're ready to get it handled, okay? So that, those are the people that we are gonna be talking about today. The people that are in the 
of your world. And that should actually feel really good that 67% of the people out there are actually looking for what it is that you have. It's like, hallelujah. Like it's not like 3%. Um, and the beauty about that is you don't need to convince or persuade those people that there's an issue. They already know that there's a problem, right? So we want to take the information that you're learning today and get in front of that 67% and the 3%. You know, typically the 3% just needs an offer. The 3% just needs to know how can they work with you because they're ready. They're like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to go all in. What do we do next? Okay. So we're here to talk about that 67%. Uh, Laura, what was your top archetype? Artist. Artist. Okay, cool. Um, Jill, real quickly, between um, explorer and alchemist, is there one that feels a little bit more like, mm, like a little bit more oomph to you? I had a feeling you were going to ask me that or that we were going to try to narrow it down to one. So I'm looking at both. And I'm like, man, I just love them both so much. But I think if I were to say the direction that I'm heading, I think alchemist is yeah. probably a little bit more than the explorer. Yeah. And are you a coach? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Yep, that makes sense. So there, typically coaches, we have a lot of alchemists in coaching because it's about transformation, mm -hmm. right? right? Creating a difference in the world. Yeah. yeah. Not that coaches don't do that too. They absolutely do. <laughs> but typically a lot of the coaches in the world have, you know, the alchemists somewhere in their top three. Hi, Jennifer. How are you? Welcome. Good to be here. I'm not sure if I need to be here, but I'm going to still kind of listen. I'm a writer, so I'm not, I mean, I might lean into being a writing coach eventually, but right now I'm just an author and no, I'm trying to build a newsletter, a newsletter list to sell my books. Yes. No, no, no. You are perfect. Yes. So this is absolutely for anybody who wants to build an email list or even cultivate a community. So it's not just for coaches. It's not just for wellness entrepreneurs. So you're in the right place. Really, really glad to have you. Okay. But surprisingly, my, my two top ones were humanitarian and romantic. Oh, yeah. Not all the ones that I thought they'd be like the artist and the alchemist yeah. and all this sort of stuff. So yeah. it's this is awesome. Weird. It's great. Okay, cool. I can't wait to kind of share, you know, the, the, uh, the um, philosophy behind all of this. Cool. I've got romantic in mind too. Yeah. Pamela and Allison, would you come off mute, please, and share with me what your top archetype is so I can make sure we get that covered today. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just filling mine out right now, but and I'm not putting my video on. I'm very sick today. So oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, okay, I'll drop in the chat what mine turns out to be. That would be great. And I'll circle back around just in case. Uh, I'll go through Jill's and Laura's and Jennifer's first. And we'll you. circle back around once you're done. Allison, how about you? What was your top archetype? Hi, so I joined the meeting late and I missed a big part of the discussion earlier. Um, I don't really understand the question, but like Jennifer, I'm also a writer mm -hmm. trying to generate uh, email subscribers because my list is very small. I'm starting, you know, mm -hmm. just starting to build a list. So I thought maybe I'll all learn from your wisdom. Oh, yes. Okay, great. So here's what I want you to do, Allison. If you haven't taken the quiz yet, take the quiz, fill it out while I'm going over these other archetypes so that you can really get the maximum amount of benefit from, from being here, because we're going to be talking about what specifically is attracting clients to you. And you need to know that as a writer too. If you want to cultivate a community, you're going to want to know what is specifically attractive to the people that are looking for whatever solution it is that you're providing. In right. your okay. Do you have, um, I just popped in the chat. If you take a look at that very top link where it says branding with archetypes, go ahead and click on that and that will take you directly to the quiz. Okay. Okay. And then the last link here, the Google link, where it says drive Google, that's your workbook. So you'll want to go ahead and, and download your workbook because we're going to be using parts of that. We're not going to be using the whole thing. You guys are getting like so much value in this workbook because I'm like giving you all my tips, all of my secrets in there that I typically teach inside of my paid program. Okay. All right, let's dive in. Let me pull up my screen for you um, of the cards and Romantic. Now, was romantic your number one, Jennifer? What was your number one? Art was an art humanitarian. 
Yeah, humanitarian was number one and romantic was number two, about okay. four or five points down. Beautiful, okay, let's go to humanitarian first. And you guys should all have a copy of these, like the link that I shared with you, you have all of these there. Okay, here we go, here's the humanitarian. Cool. So here is the interesting thing. The humanitarian, when we look at any of these cards, your ideal client is looking for what they see in you. I'm gonna say that again. The way that you are attracting your ideal client is there's something about you that is attractive to them and they want more of that, okay? So whatever you come up as, whether it's humanitarian or romantic or alchemist or artist or whatever it is, there's language that is very attractive to them because they're seeing that in you and they want more of that. So the key in using this is not trying to figure out what all of our clients are. We don't need to worry about that because our clients are gonna be a multitude because we have all of these. What we get to do is dive into what came up for us and how we speak into that because that is what our clients are looking for. So Jennifer, you being the humanitarian, your clients are gonna be looking for, your community are gonna be looking for um, a, a way to feel like they are behind some sort of social change, okay? They wanna be part of something bigger than themselves. They wanna know that no matter where they are, that they are also gonna be able to speak up for the common good, for the common man, for the common woman. Okay, they know that this person who's attracted to the humanitarian, they also want to feel heard. They want to feel recognized. They want to feel valued. Okay, and they're going to want to see you leading this piece, inspiring people with really simple, being simple and, and forthright, like creating trust, right? So the, the humanitarian is really about being an advocate, being a friend, being a neighbor standing up for every man or woman, helping people feel that they're okay just as they are, creating a sense of quality, of belonging, that everybody matters, okay? So that's beautiful because that is what your ideal client is attracted to. They're attracted to that. And the beauty is that you don't have to be anything other than that in order to attract your ideal client because that's what they're connecting with you, right? So we get to just be authentically ourselves as a matter of fact, if we try to be something that we're not, it's not going to land anyways. Vibrationally, it's not going to be a match. Energetically, it's not going to be a match. We're not going to be all in on it. It's not going to light us up either. And there's always going to be some sort of a mismatch. So what I love is that you just get to be you. You get which to is good, Which is good because I wrote a memoir. So oh, that's exactly, I'm selling my story. So beautiful. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Um, you know, but whatever we are called here to do, with whatever voice, with whatever mission it is that we are, like the key is not to try to be somebody else or to try to get it right the way somebody else is doing it. It's to dive in deeper and deeper to who we are, to the work that we are here to do, to share our unique message and our unique voice just the way that we do. Even if the message has been said before in multiple different ways, that's okay. Nobody's going to be able to say it or have the impact the way you are. I want to give an example. For those of you that know Sarah Canal. Um, from Thought Leader Academy. She's actually one of my coaches too. Um, you know, she shares a lot about, you know, getting our message, getting our thoughts, getting our mission out into the world. And um, even if you say like, oh, there's so many people talking about this other topic. It doesn't matter how many other people are talking about that other topic because nobody can bring your life experience and who you are to that topic other than you. So when we think about, you know, books like The Course in Miracles and Marianne Williamson and Gabby Bernstein, right? Marianne Williamson and Gabby Bernstein, with as successful as they are, they're talking about the same thing. They're talking about A Course in Miracles, which was a book that was written. They're just talking about it in a different way. They're just talking about it in a way that relates to their own experiences. Okay, so we get to be, you get to be all in authentically on you, which should feel like, hallelujah, I have a relief here. So the way that you're gonna use this card, Jennifer, is the feeling that you wanna convey in whenever you're creating anything, whether it's online or in your email. So we're gonna talk about actually how to create a freebie to attract your ideal client today. We want it to feel friendly, approachable, accepting, supportive, genuine, faithful. 
Okay, so those are going to be words. Uh, we want to use words. We want to create things that are going to give them that feeling. That's what they're looking for. Yep. They're my current freebie is my top tips on how to overcome procrastination that I use to finally finish my book. Okay. Okay. You and are you coaching other writers? Not officially, but I I have formed some writing groups that they're just beginning writing. And since I actually just got a literary agent and mm -hmm. my book's finished, so I'm like much, I'm towards the end of my journey mm -hmm. and they're just starting writing their books. Okay. So I'm kind of help coaching them through that process. And how do you actually make money? Oh, I, I'm not, I'm, when my book sells, I will make money if okay. my book sells. Okay. Other than okay. that, I'm not doing this for, I haven't done anything for a, um, an income at this point. Gotcha, okay. Okay, I'm gonna. If my book sells, then I would consider, you know, then I'd have that credential to be a book coach or, or that sort of thing. But until then, I've got nothing. I don't have any writing degrees or anything like that to be able to put myself out there as an expert. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So we may want to come up with a freebie that is a little bit different. Then um, it's okay to have that freebie. By the way, you're probably going to create multiple freebies. But what we wanted, what we want to do, is really speak to something very, very specific that you, it, that, that's special about you. And it could be some piece of even in your memoir. It could be, you know, a piece, a way that you created a more accepting, you know, something. And, and that whenever we're creating freebies, it, it, it takes a little bit of brainstorming to come up with. And I don't know your client. I don't know your market. So it's hard for me to speak directly into that. Um, but what you'll want to do is find out what is it that they're really looking for, right? So what we know is that they want to uh, be part of the greater good. They want to have an impact in some way. They want to be a voice for the common man or woman. We know that that's what they want because that's also what you want. Okay, so the freebie, we want to be focused around something that has to do around that and or overcoming these, uh, these challenges that they have. Okay, so people are either going towards pleasure or away from pain. So we either want to offer something that is going to help them get more of what they want or go away or solve a challenge. Okay, so the challenges that they have are they might feel a little victimized, they might feel unappreciated, they might feel invisible, they might have a sense of cynicism or feel disregarded or a sense of resentment. Okay, so, um, you know, three of my three tips to stop feeling resentful and start feeling whatever else that they they want to feel, you know, might be something that is language that might speak to them. Okay. So for humanitarian clients here, again, these cards are going to share with you exactly, you know, that they desire a sense of belonging. So this is going to be important for you, Jennifer, because creating community is going to be super, super important to selling your book. If you want more book sales, you're going to want to start cultivating community right now if you haven't already. And that means cultivating community in your email list and also uh, online because they are looking for that. They're looking to have a sense of belonging just as they are. They crave friendship, they crave connection, they value honest qualities over being the elite, right? And so creating the community around that could look like multiple different ways. It could look like a Facebook group, which is my favorite. It could look like a membership, a small you know, membership community that you can get them access to uh, you, um, which could be a low price uh, you know, membership or something. There's multiple ways that you can do this. But what they want is you want to give them something that they can uh, share that they've got connection and belonging so that they can really, because that is what is gonna help you create a long lasting brand of loyalty and friendship with the people that are looking for you and looking for your message, okay? So over here on the branding words are words that are gonna be attractive to your ideal client. So when you're creating a freebie or when you're creating something, you're creating content, these are gonna be words that you wanna use and or topics that you wanna to talk about that are gonna be really, really attractive to your client. So you've got a whole list over here. You could talk about fairness. You could talk about equality. You could talk about um, diversity, you can talk about a multiple um, variety of things, just like you look at these words and then create a freebie around one of those. 
Is this landing? Is this making yeah. sense, Jennifer? Yeah. I mean, my bo my book's a true crime memoir, so it's. I mean, my clients' needs. I mean, their interests are going to be people that are interested in memoir reading and true crime, which is a vast, you know, that's a big group of people right now. Mm -hmm. But you know, in, in general, readers in 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 general. Yeah. But so specific yeah. target audiences. Yeah. yeah. No, that's great though because you can build a community that uh, with people that love true crime. That's no pride. That's awesome. Like you, that's an amazing niche, right? And so you can absolutely, you know, message into your whether it's your content or your freebies, you know, fighting for equality and um, finding magic in the ordinary and representing simplicity. Like you know, when we take a look at the strengths, so you can take any of these things. It doesn't matter whether you're a writer or a coach or um, a dentist. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you are like. This is this is branding. So this is the soul of the message that you can then use in multiple forms. Okay. Yeah, awesome. Um, so you hold on to the humanitarian. Jill, you were the romantic, who was the romantic? That was my second one. Oh, that was your second one, I'm sorry. Jill, you were alchemist, yes? Okay, oh, there's the romantic again. Ah, where is she? I love the alchemist. She's so pretty. That pass her? Ruler. Alchemist. Here we go. Awesome. Hang on just a minute. Let me see what's going on. Great. Okay. So the alchemist. So Jill, such beautiful imagery, right? Like I'm sure that when you saw that, you were just like, ah, oh, that feels so good, right? Just looking at it. So the spiritual contract of the alchemist is to help people make their dreams come true, okay? So the alchemist really is seen as the visionary, someone who's an innovator, a leader, a healer, someone who's gonna help create transformation in the world. And they are gonna inspire people to commit to a higher vision of what they can be. So perfect for coaches, right? Many, many coaches have alchemists in either their top one to three. Uh, alchemist is actually my second, ruler is my first, to help people create money with grace and ease. Um, so, um, so this is really, um, this is a fun one because you can take this and what you're going to do though, is remember that your clients, the people that are most attracted to you, Jill, they are, they see you as a leader and they want, um, transformation. They want results, but they want it quickly. They don't want to wait 10 years to lose 10 pounds, right? They don't want to, and, and I don't know who, what your market is. I'm just going to use some of these examples in the coaching world but they want to know that you're gonna help them to create transformation quickly. So that's gonna be key when you are creating any type of freebie, any type of content is to let them know that you're gonna help them do it quickly, okay? So remember, the alchemist is gonna to appeal to the desire that we also get to snap our fingers and experience a sense of magic and transformation from where we are now to what our dream is. Okay, so the more you can speak into how you help your clients create whatever transformation is that they're looking for quickly with a sense and a feeling that it's going to be more easeful, it's going to be really, really key for you. Okay, so the alchemist um, is about also tapping into an intuitive sense. So it's transformational, it's intuitive. The feeling is that people want to feel wowed, like, oh, wow, right? Like, think of, um, you know, having something happen quickly and they're just like, wow, or illuminating a path that they didn't see, okay? Um, so the soul, the feeling is, you know, giving people a feeling of illuminating a darkness or an obstacle that they didn't see before and how to transform that into something magical or a miracle. Just a quick little comment on that. That's interesting that you say illuminate a path that they didn't see because that's literally one of my favorite things is when I'm coaching somebody and the words they say are, I've never thought of it that way before. Yes. Like that to me is like that hits so hard. Like, yes, I've opened up a new pathway. Yes. Wow. Double that, double down on that. Now that is going to, here's, here's a, here's a ninja tip I'm going to give you guys. Whenever you feel something that Jill just did, where she's like, oh my gosh, my clients say that to me all the time. You get to put that on repeat over and over and over and over and over again. That becomes part of your core messaging. 
if your clients are telling you that that's what they want and that's what's landing for them and repetition builds belief. It's not like, oh, I said this before. People are going to think that I'm stupid if I say it again. No, they need to hear it over and over and over again. It actually takes 21 touches before anybody is going to do anything differently. Okay, so this is great. So as we go through the alchemist, I really want you to kind of underline, write down any words that are like, oh yeah, my, my client said that, right? So the challenges that your client might feel is she might get stopped by procrastination, perfectionism. She might feel ungrounded. She might feel like things are unrealistic or that there's some sort of trickery happening. Like it's not really real. Yeah. The strengths are that she really does like hearing about new solutions. So think about using the words innovative, transforming, inventing new solutions, producing new ideas, inspiring possibility. That's going to really resonate and connect with her. Okay. And then same here over here, your branding words, you can take a look at it and be like, oh, how fun is this? Like you get to take, you know, my top three ways for illuminating your path to X, Y, Z, or my um, top uh, three ways to have X, Y, Z in two minutes or under, right? Remember quickly, right? So how do we collapse the timeline for them in a way that's quick, quickly? So whatever you decide to create as a way to help them raise their hand. And here's, here's really what we're doing when we're attracting our ideal client, when we're creating a freebie or when we're creating content. We're in an attraction mode. We're helping to have people raise their hand in our world so that we can see who our ideal client is. That doesn't mean they're paying to work with us yet. That's totally fine. But people go along this pathway. They're going to go from a stranger. They don't know who we are to a viewer, they're gonna raise their hand and they're like, yes, I want your top three tips for doing this in two minutes or less quickly. That's gonna illuminate a path for me. That's me. Like, they're gonna be like, yes, send it my way. Or if you create a post and you say, raise your hand if this resonates for you, they're gonna raise, they're gonna do that, right? Or if you create an email around it and say reply or you know, download my freebie, amazing, right? So all of this is gonna to work together and you're gonna use this in your email and in any type of your messaging or marketing, okay? So she also likes intuition, synchronicity, flow, showing that there's a definite before and after, right? Again, she doesn't wanna wait 10 years to lose 10 pounds. She wants to know that there's a before and an after and it happens quickly, yeah. So again, it appear, it, your alchemist brand, so take a look at you know, where it says your alchemist clients, it's gonna to appeal to those who desire something in their lives to be magically transformed. So when I hear the word magically transformed, that sounds to me that they also don't want to have it cost a lot of energy, a lot of time, a lot of money, right? Simply, is this landing? Yeah, and they want it to feel amazing. Like they're, they're about feeling too, right? Like they get to do this and feel amazing. So you wanna make sure that your messaging, your branding, your freebie, whatever you're gonna to do to help them realize their dream is gonna help give them a clear vision of what's possible. And also you're gonna present it in a way that is gonna feel like a new opportunity, something transformational, not something that they see out there all the time. Yeah, helpful? Laura, remind me about your top ar ar uh, archetype again. Uh, it, it was artist, okay. artist, nurturer, and sage. Okay. Artist was the top. Beautiful. So we're gonna, just going to stick with the top ones today because of the time that we have available. But we definitely go in deeper with the top three and how to pull all of these together to really... Um, connect and attract your ideal client with some, some more practical tools in the branding. This, and it's called the soul of your brand. And that is the VIP day. We're actually gonna be doing that on November 7th. So I will pop the link in the chat here today and I'll send an email out with the link if that's something that you wanna explore. So the artist is helping people confidently honor their self-expression. So keyword here, confident and self-expression. Right. So the artist 
drive for you, you're going to help them reimagine the ordinary and turn it into something that feels extraordinary. And that's also going to fuel a deep desire. They already have a deep desire in them. They want things to be different. They also don't want to conform, right? So they have an imagination for innovation and they probably have a whole lot of ideas, never ending stream of possibility. It could look like this and like this and like this and like this. So your client is gonna to wanna to know how do they take these little bits that they have, the untapped potential that they know that they have, how do they confidently honor that and turn that into something amazing that has to do with their own self-expression? And you know, this could be anything from redesigning everyday tasks to recreating their life in some way, okay? So the artist lifts us up and it gives us permission to create not only how we see the world, but who are they in it? Who are they being in this world? So it comes down to an experience of being. They want to be confident in who they are as themselves and they wanna honor it. So the artist is about being a creator, an inventor, an innovator, a dreamer, a nonconformist. And so in your content, in your copy, in your freebies, in whatever it is that you create, you wanna give them the feeling that they get to be passionate and creative. They get to express who they really are without having to conform to whatever it is that you think that they feel like they need to conform to. But they also want a sense of beauty, which totally makes sense as the artist, okay? Strengths are that they know that they're highly sensitive. But again, when we talk about strengths here, this is where you're going to be like, this is where you're going to call out that I see you. I know that you're highly sensitive. I know that you love to create, um, you're very creative problem solving. I know that you get to see um, uh, opportunities where others don't, right? So the strengths here and that they want to reimagine something new. They wanna, again, turn the ordinary, something that just looks ordinary into something extraordinary, right? I'm just gonna share an example here just because it's on my desk. You know, this is just a water bottle. It just happens to be in glass with this cute little top. You know, this is a very, this is like an artistic bougie water bottle in my hotel room here, right? So, you know, this is just an ordinary water bottle. It could have just been put in a plastic, but no, it's not. It was, you know, it's like, oh, it feels special. It's non-conforming. It's beautiful. Okay. The challenges that your clients are going to be um, overcoming, are they probably going to be distracted? They might struggle with some uh, judgment, perfectionism, procrastination. We've heard those again previously. Uh, being obsessed with something. And so these are gonna be the challenges that you wanna speak into. How can you help them overcome a sense of procrastination or perfectionism? How can you help them stay on track and not get distracted? While feeling creative, passionate, expressive, beautiful, non-conforming. Is this making sense, Laura? Okay, great. So here's even more information. They wanna do this and also feel really self-expressed. Like it's important for them to express themselves and who they are and to feel valued as an individual. They don't wanna be the one of many. They want to be involved in the process of creating and customizing something just for them. So when you are creating an offer, you want to speak into the value that this is being customized just for them, and you're going to do it with them. They're going to be part of the process. They're going to love a lot of imagery that is going to convey emotion, and they also want to feel encouraged. How's this landing? 
it's uh, it's it's interesting because I help people, or my intention is to create materials and teach people how to. Um, I'm a I'm a home kitchen consultant, and so a lot of what what I feel is that people are missing the mark with, you know, with these, you know, like you, you go through all the design magazines and you see what your kitchen should look like, but there's no customization. There's no customization. And so my whole thing is to teach people how to figure out what they need and what they want so that they have, you know, they, they don't have what other people are telling them they need to have. It's what they need to have that supports their lifestyle and, and cooking style. And yeah. yes. Oh my gosh. So good. Not a cookie cutter solution. Yeah. So all of this, you know, at first I was like artist. I'm like, how is that gonna, you know, I'm, I'm not like painting things. I'm not <laughs> doing these things, but, but yet there's, there's the creative solution, you know, it, it, you know, and and you know what works for one people doesn't what, what works for one person isn't going to work for somebody else you know maybe oh my god Lori, this is spot on for you yes i mean and look at it is here. It's scary. So Williams, you know painting and helping them you know with you know inner decorating even i don't know if you help them with that in their kitchen no no it's mostly just funk it's mostly functional. functional okay awesome i mean how amazing would it be to have somebody that hears you listens to you and beautifully recreates the kitchen and brings you along in the process so that you feel a part of it that is going to help them with their authentic self-expression so that it's like, yes, this kitchen works for me. This is the beauty, you know, instead of just going to Lowe's and picking out the cabinets that, right. you know, a hundred million other people have like, and so you can actually throw stones at the cookie cutter pieces because that is what is going to have you stand out. What is going to have you stand out again, remember, they want to do something with you. They honestly don't just want to go in and like have somebody like, you know, give them all of the pre-made, whatever. They want you to be like, I'm going to hear you. I'm here with you. And we're going to take a look at this part of your kitchen and this, you know, style of faucet or, um, you know, where we're going to write. Like that is going to be where you get to say, this is why you want to work with me. And your client is looking for that. Your client is looking for a designer that's going to listen to them, hear them, and help them to create something beautiful in their kitchen that feels like them, that feels homey to them, that allows them to really re relax. And, you know, we've got so many different styles out there, right? We've got the retro, and we've got the mod, and we've got the country French, and we've got the, I don't know, a whole bunch of different ones. And this actually might be a really good um, freebie for you, Laura is to create a quiz of like, what is their kitchen something like, um, you know, like we have brand archetypes, right? Like which, which brand archetype are you? Well, what, um, what is your kitchen something? Um, not your kitchen brand, but you know, your kitchen voice or your kitchen goddess or your kitchen something um, so that you, they can take the quiz and then they can find out, you know, and you can also learn about them. You know, do they fit into the uh, shabby chic? Do they fit into the, you know, retro? Do they fit into the mod? Do they, you know, which part do, you know, best represents themselves? So again, self-expression is key. And quizzes like that are fun because people love to learn more about themselves, right? We all do. We all wanna learn a little bit more about ourselves. Awesome. So again, use these, uh, you know, think about the word treasured, you know, you're going to, I'm going to help you create treasured memories in your kitchen. That would speak. Totally. That's one of, yeah. That's one of, you know, you can play off of not, not play off of, you can evoke nostalgia. You can evoke, you know, yes. health. Yes. Yes. Authentic right? Creativity, imaginative, different. They want to know that it's different. They really do want to have something that is not like everybody else's. They also want to feel valued and see the value. It says here, do it yourself, but instead of do it yourself, I would say that you're going to help that you're going to do it with them so that they can do some pieces of it themselves, but you're really going to help them to create 
the, you know, you're going to go through them. They want, because they also do want to be involved in the process. Mm -hmm. So again, well, that's, yeah, that's where, that's where I'm developing materials to let them do it. Yeah. Too. So, so for you, it's going to be important for you to have offers when we get into kind of the pricing and the offers of our business, one that you do with them. And when maybe a DIY offer, that's a little bit lower. Okay. So understanding what, where those two offers fit and letting those be your two core main offers is going to be absolutely something in a way that you can keep your business model simple and create six figures or multiple six figures with those two. And if you want support with that, just let me know. Happy to help. Thank you. So, awesome. So these are the words that you're going to want to use in your copy. Beautiful. Pamela, what were you? What was your top archetype? I am sage and alchemist. Ooh, so sage number one, you're a teacher. You like to teach. I do. Yes. Beautiful. So this, we just happen to be on the sage. And I love the sage imagery too. Like so beautiful, right? So the sage, the clients that are going to be attracted to you, they really want to discover truth and share wisdom. So the sage's archetype really is to not only search for information and wisdom, but to share these with people. So people are going to want to know that you've got the answers and you're going to want to share them. Okay. So you are going to be um, at your very best. You're going to be able to integrate information and insight, and you're going to basically take it and organize that information to help people see how they can uplift their spirit and advance their lives. What is your business, Pamela? So that I can speak, I can give more examples as I'm speaking through yeah, this. I, uh, I have a program for midlife women called Midlife Upgrade, and it's really um, providing resources for, I mean, there's a lot of misinformation in there about, about going through menopause. So yes, yeah, oh, wow. yes. So what you're saying rings very true to me. Fantastic. There is a lot of information and there's a lot of information and it's noisy in the online world. So your ideal client is going to look for you to take all of that and compile it and organize it in a way that makes sense for them. That is going to help them feel amazing and advance, you know, enjoy menopause or enjoy going through it or the other side of it. I, I've been menopause. I started going through menopause when I was 45. I'm going to be 55 this year. So yeah, there's a lot of freaking misinformation out there. How can you take all of that and, you know, give them the feeling that you've got them and that you've got the wisdom and you've got the um, explanation to support them, right? So your ideal clients are seeking to understand the world around them. Mm -hmm. They're attracted to you because they see you as a guide, a mentor, a wise woman, okay? So the words that you're gonna wanna use to attract them to you are gonna be helping them feel that they're learning something of value, that you're gonna help them master this piece of going through menopause. You're gonna give them insight. You're gonna give them knowledge. You're gonna share your expertise because you are an expert in this. And you get to also talk into and establish yourself as an expert. You're gonna to wanna to share proof with them, like maybe even some statistics or numbers or whatever as well. That's gonna be something that is gonna to speak to them. They also um, are interested in discovering the truth. So when you said there's a lot of information, misinformation out there, you're gonna to wanna to talk about that a lot. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of misinformation. Let me share what's really true about that. You're gonna to wanna to put that on repeat. Okay. You also are going to encourage them and they're also looking for independent thinking too. So they're not going to be like, oh, just tell me what to do. They're going to be like, yeah, give me a reason why I should believe this too. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of a skeptic in there too. So she's going to want to hear, you know, she's going to want to see you as the leader, but she also is going to want you to back it up with the science. And menopause feels like a mystery to many women. So you're going to want to speak into that, like solving the mystery, like solving the menopause mystery. That would be an amazing freebie. I would have downloaded it. Solving the menopause mystery. Holy shit. I want to know. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here's where your people are going to have challenges. And so you want to speak into the challenges. They overanalyze. 
They probably have gone to WebMD and overanalyzed and check, you know, all of the things. And then because they're, they've overanalyzed, they can't make action. They can't be decisive and they can't take action. So your message, Pamela, is going to be how you help them do that. You're going to help them take all of the information out there, make it simple, understandable, give them the insight so that they can be decisive about what to do and take action towards it. Makes sense. How is that landing for you? Yeah, it's very clear to me. Yeah, yeah, that's what she wants. So the more you can speak into that piece and create not just copy, but even a freebie around that, that's going to be key. And we talk about freebie here in just a minute. So remember, your clients want information that they can trust and believe. So you're going to want to talk about that too. <laughs> You want to cultivate a sense of trust. You want to give them reasons that they can trust you, like you know your credentials or the things that you've done or the process that you've gone through, your life experiences, the things that you've learned and the ways that you've earned being the expert in your field. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. They also really value empathy. And especially in this niche where you know women are struggling in menopause, like having somebody that you not only see as a mentor, but as uh, somebody who gets you and feels for you too, is gonna be important too. So the words and the, the images or the stories that you share are gonna also be around uh, empathy, letting them know that you've been in their shoes. You've mm -hmm. been there before, you've struggled with this, you've come the way out, here's my success. Okay. Okay. And again, we're just doubling down here on giving plenty of proof that your information can be trusted. You can also show the pros and cons of working with you. Here's the pros of working with somebody that's gonna help you dive in and, and do this. And here's the cons of you know, not having support. And I don't mean that we're like, don't work with me because of all of these reasons. We're talking about when we say the cons, like this is, uh, this would not be for you if you are, or the clients that work best with me are clients that are willing to take the information and uh, put it into action so that they can finally have the solution. It's not for somebody who's looking for another pill, potion, or shake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we get to establish you as a trusted source. And that really is what the clients that are attracted to you are gonna be going for. They, they're attracted to you because they see you as a trusted source that they can respect and admire in helping them through this challenge of um, whatever they're struggling with in menopause, whether it's hot flashes, you know, resistant weight loss, whatever. Okay. And then you've got some branding words over here too. So all of these branding words on your cards are all about how, you know, which words are, are your ideal clients gonna connect with? So when you use the word research, I researched, when you think about um, it using the word independence or bringing harmony, oh, what a great word, right? Who doesn't want more harmony as you're you know, dealing with uh, the ups and downs of emotions and hormones and weight in this process with you. Yeah. Awesome. Michelle, how are you? I'm good. I'm just, I completely got my time messed up. So I was like, I didn't log on to that thing. And I was like, oh, darn it. But I do think that it was perfect timing because I think probably the sage resonates with me. So did you take the quiz? I didn't take the quiz, but just even reading. <laughs> you need reading. to take the quiz. So I will. That's okay. Where is the quiz? Yeah, it's in the chat section. Okay. Yeah. Pamela, did you not get the cards? Mm. I did find the cards. Okay, great. Awesome. Okay. 
Yes, I, Michelle, for, I don't for Michelle, think, I don't think she can see anything in the chat section if she joined after. Oh, you oh, it. oh! Thank you, thank you, right. right. thank you. That's what I was You're about welcome. to say. Let me grab it for you. Hang on. Shoot, why is it not letting me copy that? Hang on. Let me pop this here. Not it either. Um, Michelle, I am going to have to send it to you in your email. For some reason, it's not letting me share this. Unless one of you could copy that. It's just, for some reason, it's not letting me copy it and paste it. If one of you could just copy that top link that says branding with archetypes, that would be awesome. And just pop it in here for Michelle. OK. So Michelle, I am going to have to move on because we're already at the top of the hour. So, um, and who joined us? Who's on iPhone? I don't know who your name is. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and, and continue on then because we do need to get through the first part of the worksheet. Otherwise, we'll be here for like all day. Um, let me see where did it go it's always so fun when i have a gazillion tabs open on my computer hang on just a minute All righty, I have to pull this up again. Hang on. Pamela, did you have any other questions about your um, archetype? No, that was really helpful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, great. All right, so here is what we are gonna wanna do with the information. So now is the time to take the information that you just learned and double your email list, okay? Now at the very, very, can everybody see this by the way, how to double your email list? Okay. I wanna preface this by saying this is a giant document. There's 23 pages in here. We are not gonna get through all of these today, okay? The most important thing that I want you to take away with is what we just shared about your ideal client. And I want you to pick something that you're gonna be able to put out in front of the world by creating a freebie, okay? So I also wanna share with you because there were some questions and I don't want anybody to share this step. In order for you to double your email list, you need to have an email provider, which is called a CRM. You don't want to just use Gmail, Yahoo, or just like a spreadsheet, okay? Now, the one that I use and love is ConvertKit. ConvertKit. That's my favorite. That's the one that I teach my clients how to use inside of Activate Abundance, how to create landing pages, how to create opt-ins, how to upload your freebie, all of that. ConvertKit is amazing. It's very intuitive. There's even a free version of it. Spot on. I actually used that for... Um, many, many years in my business, I just switched into something else because I went to a platform that had email built in with my membership um, program. But if I didn't have the membership portal that I needed to support, I would still be using ConvertKit. It's really, really great. So your email provider is going to allow you to send out whatever freebie it is that you want to come up with. Okay. And send that out and collect email addresses so that you have a way to bring people, whether they're online, whether you, and again, this doesn't matter whether you're doing this online or whether you're doing this in person. Because even if you if you love to do talks in person, you want a way to, to have people's information so that you can still serve and nurture them in email. Okay, so we already went through some of this, but you can go through this piece, you know, what's your top brand archetype? And what are the words that are attractive to your ideal client? 
So I walked you through each of those already so that you can kind of take a look at, okay, what does your card say about what your ideal client is most attracted to? Whatever she's most attracted to is what the topic of your freebie is going to be about. That is how you're going to double your email list. The topic of your freebie is what she's most attracted to. Putting something out there that somebody is a hell yes about, that's like, oh my God, I so want that. And then the challenges and the strengths that you saw in there, your freebie, you're going to pick either one challenge or one strength or a challenge and a strength to create a freebie around. And at the bottom of this document, you've got 21 freebies that convert. I'm giving you all of the ideas here. So if you're like, I don't know what to create, go down to the bottom of the sheet and you will see a whole plethora of things that you can create. But, the, but it's not just creating any old freebie, it's getting really clear and specific about what your ideal client wants. And remember your brand archetype, what she sees in you is what she wants, okay? So what can you offer people? And again, this is where we wanna offer a killer opt-in. We wanna take one specific problem to tackle, one. We're not gonna to try to solve the whole thing. One specific problem. So think about your ideal client, Think about what it is that she's looking for. What were the challenges on your brand archetype card? Pick one of those that you're gonna come up with. And then you wanna come up with three tips that are gonna help them either overcome that obstacle or move away from whatever pain they're experiencing. Like the procrastination, right? Was Jennifer, wasn't that you were talking about procrastination? Yeah, so three tips to move to stop procrastinating or stop, I call it procrastinating planning when you're getting ready to get ready, right? You could use something like that, you know, three tips to stop getting, to de getting ready to get ready to write your book and actually take action. That would really resonate with the people that are like, oh yeah, I'm procrastinating on it. I would love to know what three tips would help me stop doing that. Okay, so you wanna take a look at what are the three tips? And we really do wanna keep it to three. You don't need 10, you don't need 20. When you keep it to three, it's manageable, right? When we, people are over saturated with information in the market. So we really wanna simplify it. So if they know that the tips that you give them are gonna be simple, they're gonna want that, right? not 200 ways to, or even 50 ways to, that's a lot. And then what inspiration you, can you provide? So again, inspiration, you can take that also directly from your card. What is inspiring your ideal client? Take those words and use that to provide the inspiration that you're helping them so that they can see What's on the other side? When they take action, when they implement these three steps, what's the transformation that they're going to get? Okay. And again, this is where we talk about benefits, right? What are the benefits? The benefits for you guys being here is that you just learned what is specifically attracting people to you. What are the words that your ideal client is attracted to? how you can create messaging and how you can create a freebie that is gonna speak more to the people that are in the slow lane, not to the people that are on the sidewalk so that you can bring more people into your world, double your email list, cultivate community. And that is actually the first step to nurturing people so that they actually wanna work with you. This is the part of building no like trust. This is the part of connection that needs to happen so that you're not just trying to take somebody who has never heard of you before and trying to just give them a free coaching session and then sell them into your XYZ 90 day program. So you can also decide on what type of format, right? So there's a lot of different ways that you can create freebies to double your email list. Educational guides, checklists, swipe files, templates, video series, like there's a whole bunch, you guys can read these, there's a lot. Um, and again, I gave you 21, um, ways or 21 ideas of freebies that do convert. So these are freebies that people absolutely say yes to. Okay. Then we want to take a look at a specific title. Okay. So when you come up with your freebie, 
what's important is that the title is results based. It's results based. You want to focus on the outcome. Who is it for? What's the outcome? So we want it to be results based. Because people are always listening to, and this is so funny, radio station WIIFM. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? So be specific with your title. What result can they get, right? So when we talked about um, doing something quickly, right? For the alchemist in two minutes or less, right? What result in two minutes or less, right? And again, think of words that will add value. So you already have all of those words on your cards. You don't even need to make a cheat sheet or a swipe file. You got them all right there. Keep it simple and we get to brainstorm the ideas. Now, I'm gonna stop right here because the rest of this goes into some more tech and also into online stuff. And we just don't have enough time to go into all of this today, but you absolutely have all of this information. I did share here about ConvertKit and I do wanna share, actually, I don't wanna stop here. I do wanna share how you can actually get people on your email list. So in order to share your freebie and get people on your email list, you need to have an opt-in page or a landing page. You just, it, the only other way would be to uh, say, ask somebody directly for their email list, but that takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of energy, and it's so much easier if you just have a simple landing page that is just giving me your name, giving me your email, and then you upload the freebie that you created. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through this piece. You create your freebie, and you can create your freebie in Canva. For those of you who know about Canva, it is a great free tool. I create all of my freebies in Canva, almost all of my freebies. This one I didn't create in Canva, but almost all of my freebies or documents or downloads or checklists or check, uh, checklists or whatever are all created in Canva. Canva's got amazing templates. So if you're looking for an easy way to create a cover title or a cover page or whatever it is, I have a resource for you um, and I've been using this um, resource. It's $47. It's called biztemplatebabe.com, biztemplatebabe.com. And she basically gives you an entire set of templates that you can use for creating a freebie or a workbook really, really easily. And I've used that same $47 set of templates to create things over and over and over again. So that is definitely worth the investment. It is template day. Awesome. So once you have your freebie done, then you're gonna upload it to your email provider. Now, ConvertKit is what I recommend and it makes it really, really easy to do this. You, they have templates for landing pages so you just click on whatever one looks pretty to you. They already have an image and they have stock photos of different images. So if you don't like that image, you can create any background image. My tip for imaging though, is I actually just download the front cover page of whatever I created in Canva. And that becomes the image for my landing page because it's right there. Double your email list, result oriented, right? So title, double your email list. This is a freebie. How do you do that? What's the result? What are you going to walk away with? You're going to learn ways how to double your email list. Simple, to the point, results-based. Okay. So in ConvertKit, you would just click a template. It's already set up for you. Email, name, and then there's a little um, button that you push once you're inside of your landing page that is gonna ask you, what do you wanna do after somebody gives you their name and email list? And you can either just send them to a thank you page or you would just upload 
and you just click the up, you know, give them a download, you click the little button, then you go to your computer and you click the actual file on your computer and it uploads it there and you're done. Like it's really simple. It does not take hardly any time at all. Now, the first time you learn it, it might feel a little daunting just because it's new, but it's not hard. Okay, it's just new. So what do you, yeah, hold on just a second, Michelle. After you've created that landing page, they're gonna give you a little link. So they're gonna, you know, you're gonna click a little share button. So you can actually copy the link of that form, that uh, landing page, and you can share it wherever it is that you want. You can share it in an email, you can share it in a Facebook post, you can share it in a group, you can share it in a message. It's just a link like links that you see here in the chat section. And when someone clicks on that, it takes them directly to that page that you just created. They give you their name, their email address, and then you get to send them that freebie. Okay. Michelle, what was your question? It was just, when you're talking about ConvertKit or an email provider, mm -hmm. are you talking, is that the same thing as MailChimp? Mm -hmm. Or is that, it, are you talking about, okay. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot out there. There's MailChimp, there's Constant Contact, there's Flowdesk, there's Matt Mimi, there's MailerLite, there's, there's a whole bunch out there. Um, I like to go with the ones that are the most simple and most intuitive. I have used Constant Contact before. I have had used MailChimp before. I love ConvertKit. It's simple. It's beautiful. The templates are easy to use. You don't have to drag and drop anything. It's just there. It's ready. Like seriously, you can create something in 10 minutes or less. So that's my favorite. Yeah, cool. So once you've got this created, the next piece for you then is to share it. Share it. Nobody, you can't build your email list. You can't double your email list if you don't share this piece. Okay, so again, why are we sharing your freebie? Because that is what is gonna help your ideal client self-identify in your world. So you get to share that wherever you think your ideal client is. My ideal clients, I know in the way that I've built and developed my seven-figure company is on Facebook. And choose one main platform. Please don't try to choose all of them, especially if you're just in the beginning stages of your business. It's really overwhelming and it's, it bifurcates your energy. You will get overwhelmed really, really quickly and you just don't need to be on the places. So think about where your ideal client is hanging out. Where does she go? Is she on Facebook? Is she on Instagram? I don't do TikTok, so I have no idea about TikTok. I don't do LinkedIn. Um, I don't do Pinterest. Like I seriously keep it really simple. My two main ones are going to be here on Facebook. Well, not on Facebook, but on Facebook. <laughs> um, or, you know, Instagram is kind of my, a little side piece that I do every once in a while. But really, those are my two main ones. Cool. Any questions about how to share or any questions that we talked about today before we pop off for today? What are some takeaways that you guys are taking away with you? I would love to know what resonated, what landed, what made this more clear. Yeah. I, I have a, a propensity for going into too much detail. Mm. So keeping it simple and brief and, you know, here's, here's this. Here's how it helps. And, you know, I think that's going to be, I, I've been working toward that. And I think that's going to be helpful. Cool. Did it help you with understanding your ideal client a little bit more? Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, it helped me because it, all the things that I had been thinking intuitively, it seemed to, it seemed to support that I was, I was, that I'm on target. So. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that clarity is really powerful because when we're spinning in confusion or overwhelm, or we're just not sure that clarity is actually what's going to allow you to take action. Yeah. Yeah. And I would love everybody to share one action that they take within the next 48 hours, just one. Because information, all the information that you've gotten from today means nothing if you don't do anything with it. 
means nothing if you don't do anything with it. So I really want you to think about, okay, what is one action? And it can be simple. Doesn't mean that you have to create it all. It could be very, very simple. It could be research a freebie that I wanna create, research the, the method of delivery. Yeah. So for me, I think the quickly thing with the alchemist is kind of hitting a note that I need to do a little bit more introspection on because I know for me personally, I was just talking to somebody yesterday about how I, like somebody called me fearless once and I'm like, well, I'm not fearless. I just go anyway. Like mm -hmm. I, I am scared, but I just jump quickly. Like I just do it. Yeah. yeah. And so then when, when you said this, so when you said this, I was like, oh, okay. So I do that. I definitely do it. But to be a little more in, like, okay, so I'm, I have some confusion around what I can give to them that they can do quickly. Like, how do I do it? You know, and so I think that'll be kind of my action is kind of thinking about that a little bit and figuring out what the best, you know, method is that way. Beautiful. Jennifer, is this the freebie that the wording that you want me to take a look at? I can't hear you. Yeah, if you want to check that and anyone else that wants to help me build my platform, go ahead and sign up for my newsletter. My next one that's going to be coming out hopefully next week is my announcing my signing with a literary agent. So yeah, so we're not going to share links here. Um, I'm taking anybody away from this platform. So this isn't the platform to actually share your own personal links. If you want my feedback on it, okay. happy to help you. but actually promoting an offer here is not part of this. Okay, well, I'm not selling any services. I'm just no, it's still yeah. it's self promotion here. In okay. the and so that is just not um, that's just what we're here to do today. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Laura, what one action would you like to take within the next 48 hours? Um, I think I'm going to look into quizzes. Mm -hmm. I don't, they're a little intimidating for me. So yeah. yeah, I have, I have thought that a quiz would be a great, a great thing, but, um, I know they can get like really confusing to put together and yeah, I have a really great um, resource for you. It's okay. called interact.com. Inter, in, interact.com. And they have all of the, they have like, you can pick like what uh, niche you're looking for and you can edit the words and the title, but they've got all of the questions and it's like already set up already. So I think that would be a really good one. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that would be a really good one for you. Chris, can I ask you just really quickly for this Alchemist one? Did you create this? Like for yeah. the, for oh, the no. archetype? No, I am a oh. certified money business breakthrough coach through Kendall Summerhawk. And so Kendall Summerhawk actually certifies coaches to help women entrepreneurs um, build their business and make more money. So this right. is her information. That's why her name is on kendallsummerhawk.com. She doesn't take people through the branding with archetypes, but she trains coaches on how to take people through branding with archetypes. Okay. So, so I was um, curious about quizzes too. And I've always been like wondered how people create these personality, you know, yeah. how they actually get this, like, what is your personality for this? Yeah. How do they do that? So. Yeah. Interact. Definitely go to interact. Cause there's the, there's a piece on there for how you can uncover your personality or your voice or your soul something. Yeah. This awesome. one she created probably around, gosh, 20 years ago, but it's still really, really valuable. I do this, um, the soul of your brand. I actually do over, typically over the course of a three-day um, in-person event that I do with my mastermind because it's so incredibly valuable. You know, when you walk away, you're feeling like I am all in, I'm clear, I know what to do, I know how to do it, I know how to message it. This is, uh, you know, it just is this amazing experience so that you can collapse the timeline to trying to figure out your niche or trying to figure out your ideal client or try to figure out how to message them or how to even invite them to work with you in a way that feels really good and natural, authentic. So I did hear the link to you above um, the soul of your brand. What I've done is I've taken this three day event and I've put it into a four hour masterclass. And so the investment in that typically is $1,000, but because you guys are here today, it's only $4.97. So you can join me over the course of that four hour session. You go through the entire soul of your brand. Um, you get an amazing workbook that is with this like one big page of, you know, 
um, the, the actual soul of your brand that you can keep up in your office. And my clients refer to it over and over and over again, whenever they're creating anything to help them attract or serve or nurture or invite people to work with you, right? So this type of messaging that you learn today works for all of it. It works for attracting your ideal client, but it also works for nurturing them in ways that, they, that you get to give them an experience of no like trust. Right, so here we're talking about connecting. We're talking about cultivating community here, giving people a place to land, giving people an experience of no like trust with you. And then because you know what it is that they want, you're gonna be able to invite them to work with you in a way that feels really good and aligned with who you are and how you wanna serve them. And that's really the key that we wanna have in our business so that we don't feel like we're trying to convince, persuade, or drag somebody across the finish to work, finish line to work with us. Like that just doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good for us. It doesn't work, feel good for them either. Yeah. I have a question. One is: Is there a replay of this? Because I missed the first. There is not a replay, Michelle. Not, yeah. I will. I will talk to my team and see what I can do, um, and see if we can get a replay out to you because because you did come late. But we're not sending replays out to the list. But if you will um, send me your email directly, um, I don't mm -hmm. know if you signed up for the quiz, but if you'll just like message me, send me an email, let me know mm -hmm. what it is. Okay. Yeah. And then the other question is: you said you mentioned the art, the archetypes, the money archetypes are. Um, I just started working with a coach on money archetypes. Are they, do they coincide with each other? They do not. That's a really great oh, question. So, okay. Yeah. okay. So branding with archetypes is different than sacred money archetypes. I'm actually certified okay. in both of those methods. Sacred money archetypes is all about how we personally do money. Yeah. Branding with archetypes is how are we showing up in the world and what are other people attracted to us so that you can build your message, your brand, some more clients are attracted to you and so that you can nurture them in a way that you know you're speaking to your yes clients, the people that are ready to work with you, that are ready to um, want to be a part of your community. Got it. Yeah, two different things. The really, really good question though, because it can be confusing. Like, oh, what's the difference? They're both archetypes. One quiz teaches you which archetype you are and the way that you respond to money. And this one is, what is the soul of who you are and what is it that clients see in you that they want more of? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Anybody else want to share what they're taking away today or what their one action step is going to be? Well, I'll share. I think you've given me some information. to. I've been struggling with my um, branding page, but... Uh, this is really helpful. Awesome. So what is your one action, Pamela? Um, I'm actually going to update my sales copy. Based Yay! On, and I'll actually do that like now. And Fantastic. Web person. Yeah. Cool. Love it. Love, love, love it. Excellent. And notice the imagery too. So, you know, you've got the imagery on those cards as well. So you can take a look at, you know, what, what imagery can you use or can you pull? And here's another resource for you guys. Wellness stockshop.com wellnessstockshop.com it is uh, by my friend brianna sash and um i use all of my photos from her so she's got a um, membership where you have royalty free images that you can use for anything so it's amazing and you'll be able to take a look at what are some of the images that you can use that you can download some of those images to use as pictures inside of your workbooks, landing pages, Facebook posts, sales pages, websites, anything. Love her. Awesome. All right, ladies. Well, I'm going to pop off now. It is time for me to pack my bags and head back to Charlotte. It was such my pleasure to get to meet you, to know you, to give you some information on branding with archetypes. If you have not yet, Join me inside of my Facebook group. I will send an email out. Um, it is the Abundant, Empowered, and Heart-Centered Female Entrepreneurs. Would love to have you in there. We really are a community of women who are building and growing our businesses together. Um, and so come join me over there. And I do uh, some live trainings every week. And then if you want more information about the soul of your brand, such an impactful workshop. Um, I know you'll take lots of value away with that and uh, be really more clear and focused 
and most importantly, simplicity, simple. So how do you do these things in a way that allows you to stay out of the overwhelm and into the action and actually bring clients in, into your business or reading your books? <laughs> we want more books in the hands of others. All right, ladies, any other questions before we pop off today? No, this no? is great. Thank you for doing this. You are so welcome. It's been my pleasure. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.